There is a reason the Triangle offense has a track record of winning championships. It's an offense that can harness the greatness of superstars while maximizing their options to get teammates involved. In many of Michael Jordan's most important moments, he was assisting rather than scoring. The beauty of the Triangle offense is that it can feature the greatest player, but it isn't reliant on the greatest player. In this video, we are going to focus on plays where the two pass, or the second pass of the offense, goes to the top of the key. Once the pass is received, it will trigger different actions depending on the defensive coverage. This man can pitch the ball to the elbow and that man can isolate, like Jordan does here. But on the other side of the floor, you can see that there is a three-man game that can vary. You'll see a curl cut that can be another way to get Jordan into the post to isolate, but deeper. But this three-man game can evolve in different ways. For example, if the post up for Jordan is denied by the defense, you'll usually see another player open, like when Tony Kukoc gets free on the flare screen here. If the man in the corner is overplayed, he has the option to backdoor cut to the basket for a layup. Then there's also the pitch post option. This is where the man at the top of the key will pitch the ball to the elbow and run a handoff. So now that we've broken down the basics of the two pass series, let's get into the plays. We're going to be looking at game one of the 1998 Eastern Conference Finals, and I wanted to show plays from just one game so you can see how many variations the team can run all in just one game. So let's get started. This play begins with a two pass to the top and then an entry to the elbow where the man at the elbow will make a passing decision. His first decision is to fake the handoff and read what's going on on the weak side. And on the weak side there is what looks like a double pin down for Jordan. But the subtle thing here is Bill Wennington's body changes angles when the ball is entered to the elbow. So he's really not setting a pin down for Jordan. But the fact that he's standing there basically makes it impossible to go under that screen. Additionally, what Wennington is actually doing is setting a flare screen for Kukoc, who set the real pin down for Jordan. So if we rewatch this, what's important to watch is what Kukoc's man Dale Davis is doing. He's going under that flare screen in order to protect the basket while Jordan curls around the pin down. The instant he realizes Jordan isn't going to get the pass, he's running into a screen and his man is wide open. Okay, so this one involves an extra pass to get into the triangle formation, but once again we have an entry to the wing and a two pass to the top. Notice this time the Pacers deny the pass to the elbow, so you can see the man at the elbow is ready to spin towards the baseline for a backdoor pass. Now this is Bill Wennington who isn't athletic, but if it were Jordan or Pippen in this position being denied, you could actually throw him a lob for an alley-oop. But since he's being denied the pass, the passing decision will come from the top. And once again you have this double pin down action on the weak side. This time they are top blocking the guy that is supposed to run off of these screens, so he rejects the screens and puts pressure on the paint instead. The Pacers defend this action better this time, so Harper runs out to the wing and enters the ball into the post to Wennington. This automatically flows into a split cut that the recent Golden State Warriors dynasty made so famous. Pippen rejects his screen due to Mullen's positioning and goes into the paint where he has a size advantage against Mullen. Now the spacing gets pretty cramped on the split cut because Kukoc is relocating right into the action, but he realizes this and he spaces out and then enters the ball into the paint to Pippen who has a size advantage. So this was one of the more messy versions of this action, but the triangle offense allows the players to continuously move around and look for advantages no matter how the defense is playing them. 
This time Jordan dribbles to the wing to set up the triangle and he passes to the top once again. Now this one is pretty simple on the surface where we have an entry to the elbow where Pippin is simply going to post up. But if we look deeper, there is some pretty interesting stuff going on that helps explain other iterations of this action. Look at Weddington's positioning. Once again, this looks like a double pin down, but that's really not what it is. What's really going on is he is setting a flare screen for Jordan's man. And what's important about this is Jordan is not the one coming off of the original screening action, which makes it less predictable. So you have Wennington setting this flare screen, and Jordan is staying really close to the screen, simply reading whether his man is leaning towards protecting the basket or the perimeter. While he is playing hide and go seek with his defender, Pippin has less attention on him while he posts up. This one is a little more simple. We have a two pass to the top, and then Pippin is just going to brick a three, but we still have the weak side action going on with that pin down and flare screen, and Mullen's positioned on top of Jordan, presumably to provide perimeter help on the man coming off the pin down. Since he's above Jordan, he can't box Jordan out, so Jordan can simply assert himself on the offensive glass. On this one, the first thing I notice is that Harper on the weak side is not at the elbow, but he's spaced out at the perimeter. This is because Jordan is the one that has the option to come off of the pin down. So if he decides to reject the screen like he does here, he has plenty of space to post up. This time, instead of the inside man setting a flare screen for Kukoc, he orients his body the other direction and Kukoc curls to the basket. Now, there are so many options happening here. First, if you look at Harper's body language, you can see him hold his hand out and then clap his hands. He wants the ball so that he can enter it to Jordan in the post with great positioning. But Kukoc curls to the basket instead of flaring out, and then if he decided to, he could have passed the ball to his screener who doesn't have any help defenders on him. Now this one is a sideline out of bounds play, and once again we have an entry to the wing, and then a two pass to the top. Notice that Pippin is deep in his positioning while he posts up. When he receives the ball, Jordan actually has two down screens this time on the weak side. Jordan uses these screens, but when he reads that his defender went under them, he cuts back to get rebounding position. Unfortunately for the Bulls, Pippin gets blocked this time, but you can see that Jordan knows exactly what to do based on his defender's positioning, and it's not always with the intent of scoring. This one is a little different because Jordan is on the wing and he actually receives a ball screen, but he immediately throws it to the top anyway, so it still essentially functions the same way as the other plays, with a pin down and then a back screen for the big man. On the strong side, the Pacers defend this play differently and don't deny the pass to the elbow or the handoff. They don't deny the handoff because Harper isn't much of a shooter. On the pin down, Dale Davis protects the lane to the basket, so Jordan simply posts up on the other side of the floor where he is fronted. Now, there's a ton of stuff going on here. But what's important is they're denying the pass to Jordan in the post, so the Bulls reverse the ball and run pinch post action for Kukoc and Rodman. The Pacers contain this action by switching, and Kukoc doesn't have many options, but watch Jordan here. He's lingering near the basket, and when Harper gets near him, he curls around Harper and shoves Harper into Miller to get open in the paint. Once again, we have a two pass to the top, and then an entry pass to the elbow. We also still have the weak side action going on, this time with Jordan setting the pin down and a back screen for him. But in this particular case, that's all just a decoy as Kukoc isolates from the elbow. Here we have another sideline out of bounds play, and this time, 
The Bulls have already assumed the positioning of the triangle, even while the wing player is still out of bounds. So we have the two pass to the top, and then the entry pass to the elbow once again. Kukoc has the option to use the pin down, but this time he goes baseline to the basket, which causes Mullen to linger in the paint to deny the pass to Kukoc, and then he's out of position to defend Jordan on the flare screen. The Pacers commit a foul, but notice how open the best player in the world is here. The execution on this play is a little different. We still have the two pass to the top, but instead of setting the pin down, Kukoc takes the smaller Mullen into the post. Now this is where the triangle offense is more fundamental than most NBA offenses. Instead of Randy Brown just throwing the ball to Kukoc and letting him go to work, he immediately cuts baseline before the ball is caught, which makes Travis Best unable to double the post without allowing a layup. On the weak side, Rodman is also setting a flare screen for Pippen, so while Kukoc isolates in this example, he has plenty of other options, which is what makes the triangle so special. Once again, we have a two pass to the top, and Jordan comes to set the pin down for Kerr. Now look at the orientation of Bill Wennington's body. He's facing the paint, suggesting that he is going to set another flare screen. Jordan fakes setting the pin down, but then threatens a cut into the paint, which causes Jalen Rose to go into the paint, and when Jordan flares out, Rose is hit by the flare screen. Rose actually recovers well, and Jordan still can't shoot, but it immediately flows into a corner pick and roll. When they trap the pick and roll, Jordan splits the defense, but misses the layup. Here we have a two pass to the top, and the weak side man is spaced out to the perimeter once again since Jordan is using the pin down. He curls around the screen to ISO in the low post, and this is a great example of how the triangle offense can achieve post entry in a variety of ways. On this one we have the two pass to the top and an entry pass to the elbow. Pippen is at the top and receives the handoff, and the Pacers go under the handoff, indicating that they won't allow dribble penetration. The three-man game is a little different on this play. Instead of what we've seen before, this time the man in the post receives the off-ball screens, and Harper clearly gets open on this example due to the Pacers really keying in on Pippen. but Pippen falls down and the pass is late, so Kukoc just finishes the possession with an isolation. This one starts with the two pass to the top and the pin down for Kerr. The ball is entered into the elbow where they fake the pinch post handoff. Immediately after faking the handoff, Jordan passes to Kerr coming off of the pin down. He hasn't lost his man, but Harper gets free off of the flare screen to get into the corner for a wide open look. Notice how while Harper is shooting, they have set up the sideline triangle once again, despite running a good amount of action. So if he was well defended for this shot, they could simply swing the ball back up to the top of the key and run it again. On this play, we have Jordan at the top of the key, but the Bulls want him to isolate. They don't run isolation from the top of the key usually, so what we see is Jordan exchange positions with the man at the elbow for the two pass going to the top. Now you have Jordan isolating at the high post, and once they clear from the top of the key, it's extremely difficult to double team Jordan without getting punished by another player due to both the spacing and the weak side action that's happening. And that's what makes the triangle so difficult to defend. If you send too much help to Jordan, he's always going to know what pass he needs to make to punish the defense. Here we have another example of Jordan isolating in the high post, but instead of getting there from the top of the key, he's the man entering the ball to the wing to set up the triangle. Usually this man will cut to the corner, 
but since they want to isolate Jordan, they set a back screen for him to get elbow position. When the defense collapses on him, he makes a pass to a wide open Scott Burrell. This play is the best the Bulls execute the action in this game. The first thing I notice is that the man at the wing is pretty high on the floor, which shows you that the triangle can move around a bit and space more in order to be flexible. Two pass to the top, and this time Jordan receives the pass off the pin down. He's well marked, but if you notice, due to the flare screen, the sideline triangle is set up once again, so Jordan simply passes to the top of the key, and they run the same action again, which gets Scott Burrell separation for a jumper. Let's rewatch it again, and pay attention to Burrell's defender just running into screen after screen, getting frustrated. This time we have our two pass to the top and the elbow entry pass with Kerr cutting through the paint and around screens from the low post and the man on the wing, but this time Pippen at the top of the key sets an additional off-ball screen, so if you count, Kerr gets one, two, and three off-ball screens and he even has the option to receive the handoff from Jordan, which would have acted as a fourth screen but Travis Best does an excellent job keeping up with him and denies the handoff, so Jordan once again isolates from the elbow. Once again, even after all of this action, the Bulls still end up in the triangle formation, so if they don't like what they have, they can simply run some other type of action, all while in sync with each other. On this one, Jordan starts out at the elbow, and then moves to the top to receive the two pass. Rick Smits is playing up high on his man, probably because he is concerned with Pippen coming off of the curl action. Luke Longley reads this and seals Smits, leaving him with a wide open layup, and Jordan hits him with a perfect pass and he draws a foul. This time we have Jordan on the wing, and instead of setting the pin down, he looks to use Longley as a brush screen to get position in the post. With his man in the paint to defend this, Jordan maneuvers himself so that he can use Longley as a flare screen to get an open jumper. Well, that does it for this one, you guys. Thank you for checking it out, and remember to subscribe if you haven't to get updates on future videos. Thanks.